Hello, this is Jonathan with Resale World Technical Support, and this is a video on how to use the Liberty Mobile Item Entry app Lite for consigners. The first thing we are going to do is download the Mobile Item Entry Lite app from the Apple App Store. We're going to tap the App Store icon, usually it's on your front home page. Now we're going to tap in the top right corner you'll see search. Go ahead and tap into that field. Once you have the option up you're going to type in resale world and then you can tap the reselleworld.com incorporated option. This will show you a list of applications you can download. You're going to do the item entry app light or item entry light app you will tap install. In this case it'll say open because I have it installed already. Type in your Apple ID and password and then you will download the app. The application itself will be located somewhere on your home screen. It's just a matter of either swiping to your left or to your right to locate the app. So in this case my application is going to be on the right side of the screen so I'm going to swipe to the right and then I'm going to tap on the item entry app light app here. And this will open the application. Next you'll be prompted by this screen. You are ready to go ahead and enter your information. You're going to tap I'm ready. Now from here, or at least for the next two screens, you're going to need the email that was received from your store owner. You will get the server address, the key, the username, and the password. So you will need this information for the next couple of screens. From here we will need to enter the description which will be the store name of the store. I'm just going to type in store name in here. Next you will need the server address which is going to be a set of numbers provided by the store owner. Usually there's uh, three periods in between each number. Mine will be an internal IP address. Uh, moving on to the key here, we will then enter our device key that is also provided by the store owner. Next, we have to make sure that SSL is on or off, depending on what the store owner requests. So we can just tap it on or off, and then we'll tap our Submit button. The next screen, we'll, we'll tap into the username, and then we're going to put in our, our actual username, which in my case is A0002. And that's usually the account number. Then we'll put in our password. And this is a completely randomly generated password that is also given out by the store owner for your account. Once we tap that in, we want to remember the username, so we'll tap that on, and then we'll tap the Submit button down here. This will bring you into your account. First thing we want to do is double check that the account information is correct, like the first name, the last name, the address information, and the email and phone number. Once that is set, you can then look at your actual inventory and this shows the item number, the actual item name, the status of the inventory over to the right and the quantity that's next to the status. And of course you're only looking at available inventory. Then you're looking at the date received. And finally the actual price of the inventory. Uh, that's per line item. Now to add an item we're going to tap the add button here. And uh, normally we start out at the top 20 view. Um, I usually recommend going to the tree view. The top 20 is the last 20 used categories. It's important to ask your store owner what level of category structure they use. If they are a category level one structure, then they will just have you select pants, shorts, jeans, and you will not have to select the section or the department that these categories are coming from. If they are a category level three structure, then they will have you select a department, which can be men's apparel, the section, which can be pants and shorts, and the type of item, which can be jeans. 
So again, important to ask your store owner what level of category structure they have and adhere to that. So in the tree view, I'm actually going to select my first department or my first level category, and that is going to be men's apparel. And then moving on, we'll go to the pants shorts area and then going to jeans as our third level. So I'll go ahead and select the, the next option here. Next we have the brand selection. So I'm going to select Lucky for my first brand. Then we have the color. I'll go with green. And the size, 36 by 32. Now keep in mind we can skip directly to the all attributes view. Um, depending on your store owner, they may only have you select three. So in this case I'm going to fabric and do a fourth. Uh, we're going to scroll all the way down until we see denim and select denim. And then we're going to go ahead and move on to the next section. Here is where we enter the price. Normally you would see a graph that shows you the lowest average and highest selling price for the item. And you can select based on that. Most people will actually type in the price regardless of what's in the graph. It's just there for a visual representation. So I'm going to go ahead and type into the price and we'll put $25 in here. We're going to tap done and then go to the uh, next option here. We have the title that's already filled in and then the description is what we're going to use to describe the item in a way the attributes can't. So for this item I have a dragon design on the uh, jeans and then I'm going to type in that it includes a belt since we can't describe that with the attributes. Next we can tap whether we want to take a photo or use a picture that's in our library. So I'm going to tap the camera here and then I'm going to tap the, the icon for the camera. So this will allow us to take a picture. I'm going to take a quick picture of my keyboard and we'll tap the little white button to the right to take the photo. Then we will tap use photo at the bottom right hand corner of your iPad screen. This will push the photo directly to the item at the store's database. We can then choose to take another picture or we can move on to the next step. So I'm going to tap that for the next step. It will then ask if we'd like to add another item. I'm going to go ahead and select no or done. And at this point, depending on which or what store you're connected to that you may get a prompt to print out a tag. In this particular case I don't have that prompt enabled. So from here I can actually look at the item that I have. I can tap the item that I just created and I can see the image that was attached along with the price and all the other information I put in. If I tap the menu button at the very top right I can then choose to add another image to this item that's already here or I can copy it if I have a, more than one of these things. So I'm going to go ahead and tap out of this. We're now going to go over the menu options that you have. So at the very top right corner you're going to see a folder and we'll go ahead and tap that. We can then choose to send ourselves an item list by tapping the email item list option here. You can select what report you'd like to email out what items you would like to email out and then when you're finished you tap the email button to drop down the list for reports you tap on the report option and then you're going to see about the three or four reports in here just select which one you want to send out and then tap the email button I'm going to hit uh, close here and then we'll tap the folder again I'll go over the edit settings area the first thing to note is that each option has its own little info button that you can tap and read at your leisure it will describe what the option does and to get out of it we simply tap OK. So we have the default category view is the first option. We can tap that and that will show us what the category, uh, the actual category view is going to be defaulted to. So I usually recommend the tree view. Uh, next we have the print tags after entry. Ours is set to always no and that's really up to the store owner as to whether they will allow you to print tags at the store. Uh, moving on, we have the default camera source, and that that is set to camera, so that way you can immediately take pictures. Otherwise, you select the library if you want to pull pictures from the iPad. Uh, next, we have the camera resolution. 
And this is set to medium by default, but you can make them larger or smaller. I recommend you consult with the store owner on that option. Then you have whether you want to save the camera images to the roll on the iPad. Um, usually that's off to save space on the iPad. Next you have the image queue monitor, and this will show you all the images that are currently uploaded or uploading to uh, the store. So we'll tap done here. Auto start Wi-Fi should always be on as this is the primary method that your iPad uses to get internet. We recommend that you leave the 3G and 4G option off as the next option here, just so that you can conserve data as you will be charged for all broadband usage from your ISP. So again, we default this to off. Next is the badge number and that just shows you the current number of images that are uploading to the store and you can turn that off and on. The prevent auto screen lock option is very important. When you turn it on during massive amounts of item entry, uh, you will not be interrupted by the lock screen on your iPad. You can change your password at any time by tapping the change password option here. You just put in your old password and then put in your new one, and then you can change that randomly generated password that was given to you by your store owner. Finally, you can change the number of items that appears per page. The Default is 50, but you can lessen that if you prefer to go to the next page and just uh, see everything more clear. I'm going to go ahead and tap Done. This concludes the video on how to use the mobile item entry app Lite for consigners.